Welcome to Choose Cyber, where we will be discussing different cybersecurity roles to close the cybersecurity career knowledge gap. My name is Christina Mortimer, and I will be focusing on the eight CISSB domains to cover roles from risk management, IIM, security operations, and so much more. This video, I want to talk more about what the CISSB actually is and what are the eight domains that I've been talking about so far. I'll be focusing more on the domain side of the CISSB and less on the testing requirements side of it. Although I will link some resources down below so you could take a look at the testing requirements and get more familiar with the CISSB. So the CISSB or the Certified Information System Security Professional is one of the top cybersecurity certifications out there. The certification is provided by the IC Squared, which is an international nonprofit association for information security leaders. that are top experts in their fields. Once you pass the CISSB, you have the opportunity to become a member of the IC Squared. As it says here, once you validate your expertise, you can become a member and gain access to various resources, educational tools, and peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities. The CISSB can be taken by security practitioners, managers, executives, and people who have experience in security practices across different domains. Although the CISSB is a good certification, you should only take it if it truly does align with your career goals. As you can see, there are other certifications offered by the ISC squared that might be more suitable for you depending on the field you're in. For example, if you're in the healthcare field, this healthcare security and privacy certification might be more suitable for you than the CISSB. There are eight There are eight cybersecurity domains covered in the CISSB. The first domain is security and risk management. The security and risk management domain covers general concepts and information of security. It's the largest domain in the CISSB and it covers things like how to implement security postures and frameworks, how to conduct awareness programs, phishing campaigns, and how to acquire new services, hardware and software, for example. It covers the CIA triad of information security, security governance and compliance requirements, legal and regulatory issues, and other risk-based concepts. For the second domain, we have asset security. Asset security domain covers issues related to the collection, storage, maintenance, retention, and destruction of data, and all the security information and requirements for assets within an organization. This domain dives deep into the classification and ownership of information and assets, data security controls, and handling requirements. Data privacy is also included in this domain. Domain number three is security architecture and engineering. The security architecture and engineering domain focuses on engineering processes and design principles. You should have a good understanding of security models, vulnerability mitigation, cryptography, and know how to design and implement physical security. Domain number four is communication and network security. It tests candidates' abilities to secure communication channels and networks. It covers network architecture design principles, network components, and communication channels. In this domain, it will be, I will be able to cover roles such as tech support and network and system security. Domain five, identity and access management, in short IIM, covers attacks that target the human gateway to gain access to data. This domain includes topics like apps, SSO authentication, privilege escalation, and other identity-based concepts. So basically it covers user, user accessibility features within an organization. Domain number six is security assessment and testing. It includes concepts of system vulnerabilities, weaknesses, and plausible areas of concerns that are not addressed by security procedures and policies. This domain will test you on pen testing and vulnerability assessments, as well as third-party audit strategies and facilitating security audits. For domain number seven, we have security operations. The security operations domain covers some broad topics like understanding investigations. This can include techniques, collection, handling, and digital forensics tools. It also includes international requirements for investigation types, establishing, logging, and monitoring activities, incident management, and so much more. This domain honestly covers a lot of security operations topics. Domain eight is software development security. 
The software development security domain deals with implementing software-based security protocols within environments for which the IT professional is responsible. It covers things like understanding and implementing security throughout the software development lifecycle and setting and applying security coding standards and guidelines. I have so far covered two roles in the first domain, which was the security and risk management domain. I have had the pleasure of talking to a risk manager and security solutions architect, but there are yet so many roles out there in cybersecurity that I haven't gotten the chance to cover yet. I hope you are excited as I am to learn more about different cybersecurity roles. As always, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on the next one.